Hi guys, and welcome back to Gamertech. With the recent release of the new Beats Studio 3 wireless, I thought it would be a good opportunity to check them out and also to see how they compare against the Solo 3 wireless released back at the end of 2016. So today I'll be having a side-by-side -side comparison, taking a look at the features of each pair of headphones and giving them a quick review. And if you're interested in purchasing one of the new generation Beats headphones, then hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a better idea about which of these headphones will be the better option for you. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you might have guessed, each of these Beats headphones are packaged almost identically, so I think it makes sense to unbox both of these side by side simultaneously. So we have here the £249 Solo 3 on the left, and the £299 Studio 3 on the right. And the first thing we'll have to do is remove the plastic film from each of the boxes. And from the front of the box you can already see how the ear cups differ between the two models, with the larger over ear cups featured on the Studio 3. On one side we have images of the headphones themselves, whilst the other features a quote from Beats founder Dr Dre, and also shows us at the bottom here the colour option, which in this case is matte black for both models. At the rear, we have a rundown of the headphones main features, which are largely identical. Both the Solo and Studio 3 feature Apple's W1 chip, offering enhanced wireless Bluetooth connectivity, a built-in wireless microphone, built-in music and phone controls, and feature a huge 40 hour battery life for wireless play. They also feature Fast Fuel, a fast charging feature which allows 3 hours of playback after 5 minutes of charging with the Solo 3 and after 10 minutes of charging with the Studio 3. The Studio 3s also have an additional feature in pure ANC, or active noise cancelling. This feature can be toggled on or off at will, but when activated the wireless playback time is reduced from 40 hours down to 22. And at the bottom of the box here we can see the included remote talk cable, which features an inline microphone and music controls, and finally we have the micro USB cable for charging these headphones. So despite Apple taking over the manufacturer of Beats, we still have no lightning connector for charging the headphones, a decision likely made in order not to alienate non-iPhone users. So now we can go ahead and slide out the box from the sleeve, and as always the contents are packaged really nicely, with that simple and clean aesthetic that is typical of Beats and other Apple products. And opening them up we're met with a cardboard cover featuring the Beats slogan, but we can remove this with this handy tab at the bottom here to reveal the headphones included carry cases, which just as with the previous generation are quite different between the models. So with the Solo 3 on the left we have a redesigned soft shell carry case, and on the right the Studio 3 Beats have a new hard shell carry case. But I'll just set these aside for now to take a quick look at the remaining accessories, which are in fact identical for both models. So at the bottom here we have the remote talk cable, featuring volume control and the inline microphone. The centre button is used to play, pause or skip your tracks, answer or hang up phone calls, and also to activate Siri on iOS devices. Now this envelope with the Beats logo on it will contain all of the paper information, and we'll take a look at those in just a second. Additionally we have a carabiner, which can connect to the carry case so you can clip your headphones to something like a rucksack during travel. And finally we have the micro USB charging cable, which with the Studio 3 packaging advertises the fast fuel feature, but oddly enough not with the Solo 3, despite the fact that this feature is of course compatible with both models. So taking a look at the included paper information, we first have the quick start guides, which are actually very useful and I definitely recommend looking at these before using either of these headphones. These are largely identical between models, with the main difference being that the Solo 3 guide features instructions for iOS 10, whilst the Studio 3's instructions are for iOS 11, due simply to the respective release dates of these headphones. We also have a large red beat sticker, and then finally the safety and warranty information. And now we can take our first look at the headphones themselves, starting with the Solo 3 wireless. So as I mentioned we do have a redesigned carry case. We still have a soft shell carry case, but this time around we have a much more water resistant fabric, as opposed to the softer fabric from the Solo 2. The interior material has also changed, and is slightly less cushioned now. 
but for a soft shell carry case I still think that the new fabric will offer sufficient protection. So I would say that these changes overall are an improvement from the previous generation. So now we can open this up and take a look at the Solo 3's matte black finish. A new colour option for the Solo range, and in my opinion it does look fantastic. The overall shape design, button layout and folding mechanism is however unchanged from the Solo 2. So on the left ear cup we have the onboard volume, music and phone control, and also the glossy wireless wording at the extension joint for resizing the headphones. The dark grey Beats logo is printed across the headband, which again features soft leather padding underneath. The right side features a glossy solo word print, and the right ear cup houses the power button. From underneath you can also see some glossy plastic trim, and also the ports for the 3.5mm headphone jack, and also the micro USB charging port. Both ear cups feature soft black leather padding, which works excellently well for both comfort and also for creating a great seal against your ear to minimise sound leakage. On the inside of the headband we also have the left and right side indicators. But since the headphones feature symmetrical ear cups, it's really up to you which way round you want to wear these, and on which side you prefer your music controls. If you need to resize the headphones, then simply pull gently downwards on the ear cups whilst holding the headband to extend them. And then you can slide them back into place and fold the ear cups inwards for storage, or to fit these inside the carry case. One thing I should mention is that it is a little bit fiddly to get these headphones inside the case. The fit is very snug, whereas we had a lot more space inside the carry case featured with the Solo 2s. So now we can move on to the Beats Studio 3 wireless, for which we have the redesigned hard shell carry case. This case will offer more protection, because now we have resistance to impact as well as from water and dust, so you don't have to worry about these headphones being crushed when you put these in your bag. These are consequently a little bit more awkward to lug around with you, but I have to say that I definitely like the security of knowing my headphones are completely protected, especially when I'm paying a premium price for them. So opening up the case we have inside the folded Studio 3s, and design wise you'll see many similarities with the Solo 3, including the matte black finish. You will notice that the headboard is slightly wider, again featuring the grey Beats logo, and these headphones are overall slightly larger and heavier. So on the left ear cup here, you can see we have the clickable buttons to control volume, music, phone calls and Siri. And at the bottom we have the 3.5mm headphone jack to connect up and use the remote talk cable. Now something really important I want to flag up at this point is that only the Solo 3 headphones are able to be used with this cable whilst the headphones are turned off. A useful feature if your Beats run out of battery and you want to keep using them. With the Studio 3 however, you cannot use these headphones whilst they're turned off, even with the cable plugged in. In fact, plugging in the cable will wake the headphones if they were turned off. So definitely watch out for that before you buy, if this is something you're going to want to be doing. Personally, I don't think this situation will ever affect me, because Beats offer a huge battery life now, and I rarely, if at all, use wired headphones anymore. And now looking at the right ear cup again, we have the power button, and below it is the micro USB connector for charging the headphones. The Studio 3's ear cups are significantly larger than the Solo 3's, to accommodate the fact that these are an over-ear design, as opposed to on-ear. But they do feature the same soft leather padding. You may have also spotted that we don't have the same glossy trim around the ear cups here, and instead we have an all matte finish. And with the Studio 3s it does matter which way around you wear these headphones, because the ear cup's ergonomic design has them tilted ever so slightly off centre to make them more comfortably contour to your ear shape. It is possible to wear them the other way around, but to optimise comfort it is recommended to wear them as they were designed. In doing so, the Studio 3s create an excellent seal around your head, to minimise sound leakage and optimise the sound output to your ears. And with the new active noise cancelling feature turned on, you're going to hear almost no external sound at all. A simple double press of the power button whilst the headphones are powered on can activate and deactivate pure ANC. It takes a couple of seconds for the beats to analyse the environment, and then adapt the noise cancelling feature to optimise the listening experience. This feature is also easily toggled on and off using your iPhone. I have to admit that I was a little bit sceptical about ANC before trying it, but I was amazed at just how well the noise cancelling feature worked. 
With ANC turned on, my beats were able to block out virtually all of the sound surrounding me, whilst accentuating the wonderfully rich and bassy sound that is traditional of a pair of Beats headphones. The Studio 3s continuously adapt to the changes in external noise to give a seamless and ever-present effect of noise cancelling. And since a lot of environmental noise is already reduced from the seal formed by the cups around your head, these headphones deliver a fully immersive experience. I actually found that in quiet environments it wasn't necessary to use ANC, and therefore I was able to use the so-called low power mode by disabling it. But for moderate to loud environments and with ANC turned on, the Studio 3s really come into their element, and outperformed my expectations. Looking at a feature shared by both the Solo and Studio 3, the fast charge feature certainly lived up to Beats performance claims. After charging the Solo 3 for 5 minutes, I was able to achieve just over 3 hours of wireless playback at 50% volume level. And with the Studio 3, 10 minutes of charging gave again just over 3 hours of wireless playback at 50% volume, and with active noise cancelling turned on. Fast charge is an excellent feature, and to deliver such a lengthy battery life after such a short amount of time charging was definitely very impressive. And the final feature I wanted to check out is the USP of these headphones, the W1 chip. So to pair either of these headphones you simply have to press and hold the power button for 2 seconds and the LED indicators will start to blink. And with your iOS or Mac device close by, you can see how it takes just a few seconds to locate your device, and then a simple tap to pair the headphones. And doing so will actually pair the headphones across all of your devices associated with that Apple ID, rather than having to pair the headphones each time. There's no longer a need to go into settings in order to pair a device, and switching between devices is now a wonderfully simple and fast process. A simple tap or click will automatically disconnect from one device and pair to another. This works extremely quickly, and the overall pairing and connecting process enabled by the W1 chip is easily the best feature of the headphones. Additionally, the chip also grants enhanced Bluetooth connectivity, and the range I was able to achieve using these headphones was seriously impressive. I was able to leave my phone upstairs in a closed bedroom, walk across my entire house through multiple rooms, including outdoors over 20 meters away, and experience no dropouts whatsoever. Non-Apple users will of course not be able to take advantage of the instant pairing or instant connect feature, but are still able to connect to the Beats headphones. Pressing and holding the power button for 5 seconds will allow you to enter the traditional pairing mode, and the device can then be selected from the settings menu. So the internal upgrades are certainly quite substantial, and would perhaps even justify upgrading from the previous generation Solo or Studio Wireless. Externally though, we aren't really seeing any differences from the previous generations, aside from the new colour options available. Design-wise however, I don't really think any changes were necessary, and both the Studio and Solo 3 Wireless are beautiful and stylish pairs of headphones. Overall, both headphones are built to a very high quality, have a very attractive design, and offer a rich and immersive sound experience. Characteristically from Beats, the headphones excel in the low end, offering deep, booming bass and a well-balanced mid to high end sound profile. If you're an iPhone user, then I would definitely say that these are the best wireless headphones you could buy, solely for the fantastic additional features that are enabled by the W1 chip, and which is probably the only reason to justify the high price tag. Non-iPhone users who won't benefit from this, I'd perhaps suggest to look elsewhere, because there are cheaper alternatives such as from Bose and Sony that will offer a similar sound quality and battery life. As for deciding between the Solo 3 and Studio 3, there are three main points to consider. Number one, do I want an on-ear or over-ear experience? This is of course down to personal preference, but for me, I do prefer the extra comfort offered with the over-ear option. Ear fatigue will inevitably set in with any pair of headphones, but I did find that discomfort began to set in a little earlier with the Solo 3s, a common drawback of on-ear headphones because they press against your ear cartilage. Conversely, some may argue that your ears can overheat using over-ear headphones. My ears did start to warm a little after an extended listening period, but not to the point of discomfort. And I didn't find this as much of a problem with the Studio 3s as I did find with the pressing against my ears from the Solo 3s. 
Number two, do I want noise cancelling whilst listening to my beats? The Studio 3's pure active noise cancelling feature worked surprisingly well, and definitely enhanced my listening experience. But does that really justify a £50 price increase over the Solo 3s? And this is point number three, the price. Again, it's down to personal choice whether or not you want to pay the extra cost to purchase the over-ear and noise cancelling Studio 3s. For high-end headphones like these Beats, I actually think this is a fair price increase in today's market, and overall the Beats Studio 3 would be my choice of headphones of these two options. If you're interested in purchasing either of these headphones, then I will leave a link to their pages in the video description below. So that's going to do it for this video. If you found this at all helpful, then please give the video a like. Comment any questions you may have or suggestions for anything else you'd like to see on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything else from Gamertech.